Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you tuning in once again. So hey, I want to thank everybody that's been subscribing and watching the channel. I really appreciate it, guys. I really do. So hey, in this video, real quick, we're going to do some painting. We're going to paint this little Fox Body 50 Mustang. This is the drag car Mustang. Uh, this car belongs to a Mr. Tony Lancer. And we sprayed this here the other day and got some debris in it. So we decided to wet sand it down and give it a redo. So that's what we're going to do to this tonight. So I'm going to show you my process on painting this from start to finish and see if we can get this thing to look beautiful. So we are using the dark blue gloss MCW enamel. This is 10007E. So we're going to get this mixed up, show you how we're doing it, and I'll show you exactly how I'm spraying it. So let's go to the bench and um, let's get started. All right, guys, so before I get started mixing or anything, I like to clean all the parts and I like to get them ready to go on my skew. So I use just the little bit of putty, like the tack, uh, like poster tack you buy at Walmart or craft stores. It's like, I don't know, a dollar or something for four or five pieces. And I usually just hold them on with that. I know a lot of guys will tape them on or use uh, oh, like glue, a little piece of styrene or whatever. So this time around, we're going to use this instead of the Tamiya stands. Um, I got to clean my Tamiya stands. And sometimes I think that's where my dirt's coming from. It's not so much dirt, it's paint particles coming out the stand. So we just took this guy, taped it to it. And when you guys are taping the stuff on or whatever you're using, make sure once you tape it, flip it around. Make sure it's going to hold, do the job. Because you don't want to get halfway and you find out, uh-oh, uh my tape's letting go or something's letting go. And... There goes the model, because once you get spraying it, you're not going to be able to, you know, grab onto it and readjust it. So always uh, just kind of important key, just to make sure it's it's secure uh, once you start. And next thing I like to do is um, I put mine in my little dehydrator, which I call the AKA Susie Bake Oven. Um, I will get it ready to go. Um, so I'll have my stand here ready to go. The door's off. And I'm ready to install the model uh, once it's painted because I don't like to obviously walk around with it, handle it, all that kind of stuff because there's just chances for dirt to get ingested in the paint. So what I'll do is once I spray it, I'll come over here, stick it in a pen, and I'll usually like the hood because we're only doing two things. So I'll take the hood, put it in here, and then I'll set it part way back. And then once I get done with the body, that'll get stuck in here and I'll just easily slide it back and I'll put the door on it and i'll leave it sit i'll probably leave it sit for tonight i won't even turn the um dehydrator on because i don't turn this on right away because i that paint needs to level itself out so it's still it's still curing um why it's still tacky so it's still smoothing itself out that's the idea of using the leveling thinner um so i don't want to put it in there right away because if it's got a little bit of ripple to it you start cooking it well it's going to cook it with a ripple in it see what i'm saying see what i'm saying so let's uh that's the way to do it. All right, so once I get all this situated, um, then I'll go in and mix my paint. Because the other thing, too, once you get your paint mixed, and then you start messing around putting the car on the holders and all this stuff, your thinner is starting to evaporate, so your paint's starting to thicken up as it sits there. Okay, guys, like I say, I like to mix the paint last, because this will start to evaporate in the cups while you're fiddling around putting the model on or wiping it down and all that. So I get that ready to go. That's That is ready to stick in the paint booth, and... It's paint time. You know, it's ready to roll. So we get our ingredients here together. So like I said, we're using our paint. Uh, we're using Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Like I say, the leveling works good because it still will smooth the paint out as it cures. And we have our MCW hardener. Um, like I said, I like put it in these Tamiya jars. Uh, that way, no matter what, the tops come off. Even though, so this is the weird thing. I do not ever dump this in, but look how the top gets crystallized. I use this every time. I pull this out with a um, a pipette, and the top still gets that way, so it's nature of the beast, but it still will come off real nice. So we're going to start with our paint, and yes, I always use two cups, and it's not really wasteful, because um, I saved this one um, for another use, but the one obviously we're going to mix the paint in, yes, that does get tossed. Um, I don't know why, I've... Obviously the cup is, you know, obviously right, 
but I, I just don't feel like it is sometimes, especially when I draw it out of the bottle. And your first mark is 2.5 on this cup. Your second mark is 5, so obviously 2.5 and 2.5 should be 5, but it just seems like it takes a lot more to get me from here to here, even drawing it in the pipette. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, I guess. I'm sure the cup's not wrong, but it's just my illusion anyways. So most of these MCWs have a little marble in it. You can hear it bouncing around. And I have to tell you, some of these paints do mix different with thinner. Um, I know the mix ratios, most guys will do a 50-50. I mean, that's pretty standard. Um, certain colors, certain uh, metallics, I found you need to add a little more thinner than 50-50, uh, especially using hardeners, because um, the hardener is almost like a regular clear coat paint, basically. So you're going to have to compensate for that as well. If you're not using hardener, then yes, a straight 50-50, no problem. So what I like to do is I like to go to the 0.5 on my cup, So I like to take it up to 0.5 of paint, and then we're going to go just a shade more over 0.5 with the thinner. You know, it'll be exact. It's not rocket science, but it's, I like to get it pretty close. That way I know I have the same mix every time. So we'll draw some of this up here, make sure it's mixed up good. And we'll get it rolling here. I've been shaking this thing pretty good, so she should be ready for action. You can see that the paint is nice and thick. And this does not have any metallic in it, so it's just a straight blue paint. So by mixing uh, basically one milliliter total with thinner and everything, that'll basically fill my airbrush cup. Um, not, it'll basically take it to the top, but I know I a lot of you guys, you guys make comments about it. I, no, I don't use a lid. And I'll tell you why. Um, so as we're painting, I'll show you here in a minute uh, why I don't use a lid. Because I like to watch as I'm painting the car body. So this is our car body here. So as I'm spraying it, I start from, say this is the edge, and I'll walk my way all the way around to the other side. So if I look in my cup and realize I only have enough to do, say, to here, I won't spray it. I'll add more versus if I know I have enough to go all the way around it, then I'll paint it. Because if you start painting and you get to the top and then you stop and then you start again, you're going to have a dry spot right here where that mist came back over. See what I'm saying? So you want to try to always just never, um, you want to keep it the overlap minimal, but you don't want to spray onto new paint. You don't want to let the overspray hit the paint you was just on it will dull it out so that is the main reason i keep my cap off is because when i'm doing overall paints um, i like to see how far i am before uh, i run out of paint so if i know i can make it one more shot okay i'll do it but if not i can look in the cup and say okay we need more paint so that is my reason i've had a lot of guys ask like you're crazy not using that like well that's why i don't fill it all the way to the top i leave it a little below that's just me. So I'm just showing you guys how I do this. And like I said, I've used the MCW quite a bit, and it's been working out pretty good for me. Yes, I still have my issues like everybody else. I'm not saying I'm perfect by any means. I'm just the amateur. Just like that. See how that happened? That's how these things happen. That was an expensive drip right there. Um, yeah. That's what happened to the blue paint. See, sometimes these gloves, they, they catch... Um, this is why I'm repainting this model because I ran out of paint because I did this exact same thing. These are the things that happens, but that's okay. That's why we got the quicker picker up here. here. Probably wipe some of the blue paint off while we're at it. Oh yeah, look at that. It'd be just like new, a few more wipes. All right, we'll try that again. Careful. Okay, so I'm almost right at the five, so I'm going to go just a little bit past that. A little bit more. Little more. Okay, so right now I am about a line past the line. You know what I mean? Like the width of the line. That's how much thinner past I am right now. 
So we are exactly at five milliliters here. And we are probably, I'm going to say maybe six and a half milliliters here of thinner. So now we're going to add our hardener. So the hardener with this amount of mix, I'll go about on my pipette here, I'll do 1.5 milliliters. So I'll get about that much in there. So the thing is, you don't want to put too much hardener in it because the paint won't spray right. It'll just start to, um, I don't know, it just seems like it sprays a little on the, on the drier side. But then again, uh, that's where you want to add more, um, you know, more thinner to thin that out. So you can see right there, I'm at the one five. So it don't matter which cup we put it in because she's all going to mix together here. Actually, I am wasting that because I should have put that in there and dumped that, but that's okay. I'm not thinking because I'm sitting there talking to you guys, but that's all right. We got lots of these cups. So I'm not going to reuse this cup. That cup is going in the garbage. And I usually take this pipette and I throw these away too because once I use it with thinner or with the hardener, um, I don't want to accidentally mix it and put it in my thinner. So I usually have one pipette that's designated for thinner and I write a T on it for thinner. And that's usually all I use it for. So I'll put it off to the side, keep it nice, all that good stuff. Just kind of save it. So this is where the little badger mixer comes in that I don't have. So I just float it back and forth like this does the job so once I get done with this once I get it mixed I'd like to run along the side as long as it's got a little bit of transparency to it but it's not too thin uh, you don't want it to where it just looks like paint running down but see how it covers the cup and it stays blue that's about where I want it because the thing is you don't want to put it on so heavy it just covers all the detail you want to keep it a little on the lighter side so what we're gonna do is just give this a lot of light multiple coats and I know there's probably you know, different ways you guys do this and all that, but I'm just showing you the way I do it. Like I say, I've had a lot of practice with this MCW paint and I've gotten it where it works really good for me. But I just, a lot of it's prep time. That's all it is, just prep time. It looks good. Pretty good. Yes, yes, yes. We have our air compressor set and we're about 18 PSI right now. So that's what we're running. And we're going to be using the Iwata uh, HP dash c airbrush so this has a 0.3 needle in it um like I say i have it adjusted to my liking obviously so and always make sure that sucker is nice and clean nice and clean so i always like to start with the hood uh, just make things are sure things are going okay um and i always test with a, a spoon that's my always test to go to so i'll get this going here So like I say, I don't go all the way to the top. I'm probably about three quarter way. That way when I move it around, it doesn't spill on me. We'll give a little shot on our spoon here. See it spraying really nice. Beautiful. So like I say, we're gonna start with our hood. I always like to examine it real close to make sure I look, I like it. And I don't have much, or any dirt at all in it. I shouldn't say much, I should say no dirt. So that's like our enemy of all. So I always like to start at the bottom of the hood and I always give it just a little bit of blow. That's why I like the, um, a dual airbrush just for this reason. And I always go past it. You never want to stop in the middle. And I don't want to go this way and then start here and go this way and meet in the middle. I want to start and go all the way across, down in the valley and to the end and go past. And then I'll come back this way and I'll go back across this way. Uh, like I say, you don't want to go halfway, stop, turn it, because then you're going to get a dull spot right here. So a lot of times too, you got edges on this. So I like to do the edges first, like all these edges. A lot of times you get dirt on this stuff from whatever you're holding it with. So I like to blow this stuff off and make sure I'm good. Because I just noticed when I did that I had a little spot that popped up top here. So, so I'll give it just a couple light coats get us started. 
do the edges first. You don't have to be heavy with it. You're not trying to cover it right now. You're not trying to paint it. You're just putting a, a tack coat, basically. That's all we're doing, just a tack coat. So just give a nice shot back and forth. Like I said, we're not trying to cover it. We're not trying to paint it completely. So as you see, I didn't stop in the middle. I just went from side to side, and that was it. So I'm gonna hit this again the same way. so far so I'm gonna let that set just for a second let it tack up and we'll give it a couple more coats this blue does not fill in very well because of the how transparent the color is so we're gonna go from this side this time and I don't like to leave these set a lot because it just gives it more chance for dirt and dust to draw into it so I like to keep right on it but obviously you can't put on just keep baking it on there because it's you don't want to do that either. So it's looking really nice. Get our edges again. And sometimes I'll take this and I'll set off the side and I'll bring it back in and we'll redo it again. But right now that's looking pretty good. And if you do get any little specks in there, I see there's a couple of just little tiny ones right there. If you, this is flat, or just regular blue paint, this will polish really nice. So we can actually polish those out of there real easy once this cures out. So we're gonna give it a couple more coats and we're gonna call this good. So see, I got a light spot right there. I'm gonna give her a little heavier coat this time around. Good there and that hood looks pretty good so I'm probably gonna do is bring that hood back in one more time I'm gonna let it sit and cure just for a little bit and then we're gonna give it a nice heavy kind of a wet coat so I just like to blow this off knowing I already just wiped it all down so anytime I start with these I like to do the inside the wheel wells first along the bottom along your edges Do the door gaps and along the sharp edges. Okay, now we'll just give it an overall. So I'll start in the front first. back where those white spots are. As you can see it takes a lot to fill that white in. So now we're just going to give it an overall and like I say when I do this I just do it a nice slow steady and I do very minimal overlap. Got to the hood or the trunk, doesn't matter, I just keep going. And I just keep rolling the body all the way around. Again, and we're gonna let it sit for a few seconds. 
let this tack up just for a little bit. Like it says, blue is very hard to cover. So as you can see right now, my paint's getting all on the thinner side, so I know I probably won't have enough to go another round. So I, that's why I leave the cap off. Just so here I can take a look and see where I'm at with paint. And that's looking pretty good so far. So we're going to let this sit for a little bit and tack up. And we'll start giving her a little heavier coats. So that's turning out pretty nice so far. A nice shine, keep it clean. Looking good, looking good. So I'm going to do is I'm going to set this in the Susie Bake Oven for a minute. I'm going to grab that hood back and we're going to hit that one more time and we'll call the hood good. Okay, so we got our hood back in action. good as I'd like to see it. See how long it takes to cover that spoon. So we're going to get that car body back out and then mix the same amount. So we'll get that out and we'll hit it one more time. I don't get too worried about if it's light in the front because that's going to get black trim in there as well so I'm not overly worried about those spots okay so we're going to get this a uh, nice overall again Back the car. So now the paint's still wet. That new paint I'm just putting on there right now, it'll suck it right in and smooth it right out for me. Okay, we'll let that set just for a few minutes and we'll give her another shot. So that's starting to fill in pretty nice. After this coat, we're going to add a little more thinner in it. That will give us a nice, real heavy, wet coat. That will be our final coat. It may look like there's a lot of paint going on, but there really is not. Okay, so what I'm doing on this last coat, I'm going to add uh, about 0.5 to 0.7 milliliters extra thinner, and that will give it just a nice smooth, wet coat, and then we'll color good. Okay, 
this is our final coat. We're going to start in the front. Get our back done. and we're going to call it good. We'll probably just shut her down for the night and we'll uh, take a look at it here in a little bit. Alright guys, so just a video on how I spray the MCW paints. Uh, I know I see a lot of guys with questions on how to use the uh, certain paints and all that kind of thing and um, like I say, I, to a lot of modelers, that is the biggest challenge. For me personally, uh, I could just spray the body, put it back in a box and move on to the next kit. <laughs> I mean, that's that's my favorite part of the kit is is painting the body. Um, not going to lie. I mean, I do enjoy the build. Don't get me wrong. But my favorite part of the whole build is painting the body. That's my favorite part. Um, that's the part I love the most about modeling is that. So I just thought I'd show you how I do it. And like I say, there's many ways to do this. I get that. Um, and I, I had to correct myself um, when I showed you the PSI on the compressor. It was actually at 16 and when you're spraying it, it goes between 16 and 17. Um, I did have it set at 18. That's what I was thinking in my head because I'm trying to look through the lens as I'm looking down. So it was a little harder for me to see it. Um, and I had it at 18 when I sprayed metallic. So I usually set the pressure just a little bit higher. So that way I don't have no problem with metallic going through the gun, uh, especially on some of those heavier metallic paints. Um, but generally on a non-metallic, I'll keep the pressure down because you'd be surprised that one PSI to two PSIs makes a big difference. Um, it, it makes a big difference the way it sprays. So uh, I don't usually run the really super high pressure, uh, especially with that Iowata gun. Um, certain guns I know, um, my, now my Pache, I'll run 20 PSI in that uh, all day long because that's got a 0.5 in it. So it likes the juice. I mean, it, it'll it take it and it sprays really nice. Um, I don't use it a lot just because A, it's harder to clean. It takes a lot more to clean it. And I don't really have a good fitting to swap it over and I don't have the quick connect fitting because Pache uses a different style um, fitting than say the Iwata or the Point Zero. They use the same type. So other than that, I have not yet turned the oven on, but I will take you over and show you the um, kind of the paint where it's at right now because right now it's getting pretty tacked up. Um, it's not obviously not dry. It's been in there right now for probably about a half hour at this point. Um, so. I'm not going to even turn the oven on tonight. I'm just going to let it sit overnight. And then um, this is Thursday night. So probably Saturday morning, I'll come in and turn it on and I'll let it run all day. And I'll bake that at about 113 degrees in that oven because it goes in different increments. I think it goes to 98, 113, 120 something, 133. It's got some weird numbers it goes to. Um, but I usually go to about 113. And for that paint job right there, will go roughly about 15 to 20 hours. And I don't usually do it all one shot. Um, I'm not that guy where I leave that and just go and go to work for the day and just let it out here run. I mean, that's obviously made for food. Um, you know, when you're putting a flammable material in there, so to speak. So I don't per se sit here and watch it as it's baking, but I will be present in the area, you know, while I'm letting it go. And I don't do the full 20 hours or whatever at one shot. I may do eight hours one day. I'll come in here working on a project. I'll come in and just turn that on while I'm in here. Maybe run for another three hours another day. So I don't usually cure them all at one full blast. You know, it's it'll be throughout a process. You know, it's just as I'm in here working. So uh, I know a lot of guys will run that and just let it go. Hey, great. But, you know, I, I don't know. I'm Mr. Cautious, I guess, when it comes to certain things. And I like to be somewhat present when it's running just to make just to make sure. Just to make sure. So uh, other than that, I'll take you over to the oven and we'll pull that out real quick and we'll call this good. So like I say, it's just the way I'm doing it. Um, and like I say, that last, that last hit, I, I'll run about 
0.5 milliliter of thinner in there. Just a little bit add to the airbrush cup. And I'll just put it right in the cup and then hit it with the pipette just a little bit. And I'll give it that final coat. And then you can go a little faster because as you're looking at it, you can see as you're painting it, you want to make sure it's it's kind of a, got a wet trail to the end. You don't want to go to where it's you're going so fast and you can see it's still dry. Because once it's like that, that's that's how it's going to that's how it's going to cure. It's going to look like that when it's done. So when I spare when it's nice and glossy like that, that's how it looks when it's done. Um, it'll look just like that. It'll it will dull out just a little bit. I mean, just a little bit, but it will retain that nice kind of luster to it. So it won't look 100% like it does right now. I mean, it's almost just like putting water on it where it's just like, hey, you know, but it will it will dull a little, but not much from that. So other than that, I'll take you over the oven and let's take a look at it. So. Just like I say, I have not turned this on or nothing. Set our lid down. I'll slide this out. Like I say, this is just freshly after getting done with it. So I'm just going to leave it in there. So the hood looks really nice. Like I say, I'm sure that's probably getting pretty tacked up by now. So it looks pretty good. Just a couple little spots in it, not nothing crazy. So we got that. And the body here. So I noticed my tape is starting to get a little wobbly on me, so that's all right. So that turned out really nice as well. As I turn it, you can see the tape's going to flip on me. And there it goes. So that turned out pretty cool. So like I say, that'll be about that shiny uh, when we're done. So Tony, your car turned out pretty good, bud. So you should be able to get working on her. Looks a lot better. All right. So like I say, we're going to leave these in here for the night. And we will uh, worry about them another day. So I'm just going to let them sit there and cure. If I don't drop them first. And we'll go from there. So, okay guys. I appreciate you guys watching and uh, checking out the channel. Uh, I'm sure this video will probably run a little long. Uh, sorry about that. But I thought I'd show you... Um, you know my take on this because I, I know a lot of you guys have questions on it and um everybody has an airbrush but nobody uses it you know so um i just that's my only to go to anymore i i very rarely use a can for anything um i used to but you know once you go this route it's almost hard to go back the other way so all right guys i appreciate you guys watching and uh hey if you guys haven't been to mark's website down at hobby and models uh that's where the paints and the supplies come from uh, go check out his website and get yourself some of these colors and uh, he has a full range of MCW down there So like I say they do turn out pretty nice in the end. So Okay, guys, you guys have a good one. We'll see you on the next video